Colorado? Colorado. He can't. He's a Mexican. Are we rolling right now? decision to LS swap the E36, first thing you gotta do is buy the motor. And so we went for it on eBay and found a like a 2001 LS6 from a Corvette and it was for 30, it was for three grand. Um, we were bidding on eBay for three days. And on the third day, it made it up to $3,500. And being a filmmaker and trying to document everything, I had my iPhone in my left hand and the mouse in my right, the trackpad on my laptop, and I'm bidding for this LS6 motor. It comes down to the last minute, and I have it on 3,700, just expecting people to like fire numbers at it. And stupid me, I decide that in the last 10 seconds to back out, change my number, and I hit the wrong key, and I hit a typo. I hit like 3450 or something, and I had to like backspace, backspace, three seconds left, two seconds left, 3550, please bid. And I was like, no, no, no. I was like, frick. I was, I was so disappointed. I was bidding on that for 72 hours. Just pissed off. That sucked. I, and you know what? It's probably a good thing. Because I think I got a better deal with this motor anyway. And, um, you know, as much as I want to eliminate the variables of having to pull something apart and and redo it. You know, I, I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of maintenance on this motor in the future, but wouldn't it be nice that, you know, when we first started up, at least we know that the motor is solid, you know? Not that we took apart the intake manifold and the fuel rails and I forgot to put a seal on the bottom of an injector or we didn't torque down the heads properly, <laughs> you know? Like, I just wanted a motor to just bolt into the car and fire up. And so we went with the LS3. I bought a brand new crate motor from GM, had the money, so I said might as well do it. And um, so, yeah, before this motor came, the first thing that ever came to this car was the Sparta Evolution Big Brake Kit. And I bought some TE37 shortly after that from my friend Henderson and Brandon Leon. And surprisingly, we got 17s to fit over the big brake kit. I didn't think I was going to be able to, so that's awesome. 
Uh, granted, we had 20 mil spacers on all four corners, um, but the radius is still pretty substantial. Vinny came over, my boy. He gave me a fresh delivery. He opened up his trunk. He had the full big brake kit piled to the top of his trunk. We pulled it out, and that was an exciting day to, to finally see those. Sweet. All right, let's let's look at one of these rotors, boy. It's so sick. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Love you too, bro. See you film. All that. Fast forward back to then purchasing the motor um, is the very beginning of October when it arrived. I saw and saw Derek Riddle's Stance Wars video from Artifact Media. I was really stoked on that, and I told him, "Hey, man, I'm." going to be documenting the build of this car and I'm bringing it to SEMA, which is in a month. <laughs> Do you want to help out and film? And, and he was down. So Derek Riddle came over. We captured, um, you know, unboxing the motor and that was a really exciting moment for me. Is it recording? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Is I it bigger like than the running? It might be. It definitely has more like pieces up here. I don't know if you saw the FD Atlanta vlog, but Drew is like, <laughs> Alright, yeah, so this is my house. What up? This is my stove. This is where I cook stuff. Let me take you out to the garage. Yo, this is the shit right here. We got oils on oil on oil, bruh. I ain't talking about that hash. I'm talking about that motor oil. You feel me, dog? We got a plane flying above us because we live right by an airport. Nah, just playing. Hello? Is this Zach Wingfield? Yeah, that's, this is him. Uh, yeah, this is Will with Sonic Transportation. I have a delivery for you. Yeah, awesome. It says on here just to give you a call when I'm, when I'm on my way. I'm about 10 minutes away. Oh, sweet. All right, bye. So the motor is on its way to the house. And we're just going to put it right in here. I have a welded diff. So it becomes really hard to push. the motor did. Uh, I think that was October 2nd. And the really cool thing about that kit is it, it maintains the body lines of the car. You know, it keeps the integrity of the E36 body. And it's not a crazy, obnoxious wide body that only looks good when you slam the car to the ground. You know, it's going to look good at any height. You know, the ability to run a wider 
stance and to have the wheels tucked under the fender. And E36s are notorious for having a very difficult time lowering the rear end um, without having to just slice into the rear quarter panel. And so I spent the next, I mean, I spent, I spent the most amount of time installing that wide body kit, I'd say, that month. Um, just kind of taking my time and making sure it's all done right and cut into the rear quarter panels, took a Dremel to the rear bumper and the side moldings and we, we measured and <clears throat> matched up the, um, the new line to match the rear quarter over fenders and the front fenders were pretty straightforward. They kind of just go right over it and we spent up until the 13th, we've done a pretty good amount of work so far. Just cut into the body of the quarter panel to match the new arch that comes with the body kit and we've also cut into the back of the well the front of the rear bumper with a carbide drill bit we're lifting our pizza slices up here on the quarter panel but i've been told that it's best to just kind of bring it up toward the body line and just cut a big square here that way we'll be able to have as much clearance as possible we're going to just continue cutting What's up guys, it's October 5th. We're in the beginning stages of the build right now on the E36 M3. We've measured, measured again, cut, drilled, and finally fitted the felony form over fender kit onto the car. And in the next couple of days, Lexus of Bellevue is gonna be painting the whole kit. I'm stoked to have this all back and finally installed on the car.